Hey peeps, it's Iris. Thank you for coming back to my channel. Let me dust off the cobwebs. I know it's been a hot minute since I've last posted. Um, a few factors in that, but the biggest thing is that I opened up my own shop in December and it's true what they say, once you turn your hobby into your business, you don't have time to do anything for yourself. Nothing creative really coming on um, except designing for my business. It's made me a little sad. I love coming on here and doing videos, providing inspiration. I love the feedback that I've gotten. So many wonderful things. Thank you, everyone. And for you new subscribers, I've been going back and checking some of the older things out. The business has been taking over my life. I did have to step back from Coco Daisy, I'd asked when i applied if i could do a short term for trial and i was gonna continue but didn't have the time to give the coco daisy products what they deserved so i stepped back from that and um color cast designs my other design team was put on hold for about a month i'm hoping to get back into that in june so coming back to my channel what i wanted to do is revive another love of mine and i had started doing a series back when i moved into this room i do have some room tours from several years so you can check those out i owe you guys a new room tour because things have changed but um i had done a series of organizing videos and i want to get back to that there's a lot of things i've learned in the past couple years being in this room and from my previous room for 10 years and new products that i'm excited to share with you guys so i'm going to start today with a uh, my favorite things type of video the big game changers for me in terms of a general organization of my crafty space also game changers in how i do my paper crafting my scrapbooking and i'm not going to go into the like like manufacturers papers and watercolors nothing like that more like a general tools that help me elevate my scrapbooking help things go smoother for me. That's what I'm gonna start with today. I'll hopefully ease back into a series of organizing and then when I can start bringing in more of this, the crafty scrapbooking with uh, both uh, design team products and my products. Share about my, my shop and the products I'm designing and, and how you guys can use them. I did have one announcement video for that if you missed it. Um, also, I just post a lot on Instagram so at Whimsy Fox is my personal account. At Whimsy Fox Crafts is the shop account. Let's get into my game changer products. This here is the mini countertop waste basket trash can. On the website, it also says makeup brush holder. This is from Lots of Style Shop. And uh, full disclosure, they sent this to me to try and review and I am in love. Like, this is one of those things where you're like, how did I live without this? Such a simple little thing. Small trash can. I just call it my little trash bin. The dimensions are eight and a half wide by three and a half deep and five and three quarters tall. Really small little guy. He fits great on a desktop. I use it here on my, my scrappy desk. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was making a ton of masks, so I had it over by my sewing machine and that desk. I believe there's still some of the some of the threads stuck in here. And usually, what I've been doing is leaving him on my Raz Cog. I pull out my Raz Cog to be on the right side of my myself on my chair, right next to the desk. And this guy sits in the middle shelf perfect height for me to grab whatever's on my desk and toss right there at hand height with the wide mouth. I don't miss like my old trash can on the floor. I would throw things and they would often miss. Holds tons of scraps. I probably shouldn't have emptied it before I showed you how much it holds. So you can buy it by itself or with refills. These are 50. So you get 100 in when you buy it together. 100 of these little tiny bags that fit perfectly for it. The top comes off and you put your baggie in. Uh, if you don't have the bag, that's where you could use this to hold like the makeup brushes they recommend, but other things too. And it comes in white, which I have. 
pink, light blue, and then they have a slightly different design, which comes in like a white, black, and a gray black. They are plain. I've seen tons of great ways creatives have personalized theirs. They have the hashtag lots of style and hashtag lots of trash can. You can see tons of creative ways people have decorated theirs. I Ray Dunnized mine because I am obsessed with Ray Dunn. You should see my kitchen, but like even here in my scrap room, I've got little trays that are with Ray Dunn, mugs, Ray Dunn, um, things to hold. See, I hold my things in smaller containers with Ray Dunn. So to match my decor here in my craft studio, I cut out of vinyl a word this toss to toss your scraps. So that is, again, lots of style the mini countertop waste basket trash can. I have a coupon code for you guys. Uh, all this information and links are gonna be down below. Coupon code is whimsyfox30. Go shopping, use that coupon. I am gonna go check it out because I think I want another one of these. And they have a few other things that were interesting, like a, there's a trash can that actually clips onto things. So I'm gonna try that out too. So anyways, use whimsyfox30 and get this little guy. You you just will be surprised at how much it holds and where you can put it just where you need it all the time. This is the die stamp and supply organizer. It goes by the desk made brand on Amazon and the totally Tiffany brand at scrapbook.com. Scrapbook.com has it for a couple dollars more than Amazon. So I linked to the Amazon down below. I love this thing. So, it comes with all these dividers and you can adjust to whatever you need to store. I show it both in previous craft room tours, holding like my design team stuff, couple of different design teams I was on at the time. So I divided it here. Um, also more recent videos, there were a couple where I showed how I unboxed and stored five kits from Coco Daisy. I have two of these. And the other one sits in another desk where I keep my project life that I really want to get back to. I keep some things that are more uh, for project life in that one. So I really highly recommend this. It's just a game changer for organizing all sorts of little bits. I like that you can change the configuration a bit so that it fits your needs it fits 12 by 12 paper it's really sturdy it is wood not like the cardboard one from ikea i just really love this one it's really worth it so that again is called the die stamp and supply organizer by desk main on the amazon website this is the one item I don't have linked to Amazon because these come from the container store. They're called the white plastic storage bins with handles. This is what an empty one looks like. These two sizes that I use throughout my craft studio are actually the extra small and the small. They have two other sizes that are even bigger. Ikea has a similar product. I don't remember which size, but I did compare size to size and they actually were heavier than the container store version, which surprised me because they actually bent more. I use these everywhere in my craft studio. Some of them actually go in drawers. So for instance, my color cast designs, I have a drawer for that. I can put these in the Alex drawers, the bottom three that are a little bit deeper than the two shallow ones at top. So I've organized some of my stuff in these within the Alex drawers because I find it easier to flip through things like enamel dots and puffy stickers in these. I also have some on counters. So for instance, these are where I pack my orders. These are from my shop. So I leave these on the counter. This one sits at my sewing desk. These are currently most used threads so that I don't have to keep getting up because all my threads are on the wall organized on a rack. So I keep the most used ones near me. As you can see here using my small one, I've got some Allie Edwards story stamps 
set side by side so they fit. So these are the four by six stamp sets. They sit side by side, you can flip through them. Uh, as an aside, I don't like having my stamps in packages, so I don't have them in any package at all. They just have their backing sheet, and then I'm using the pamphlet that comes with each stamp as a divider. I created my own tabs and stamped something from that particular stamp set onto there. I got that idea from someone else in the Allie Edwards Craft a Story Facebook group great idea obviously I have some more to do uh, since I did these first but anyways that was an aside they fit side by side the four by six so a lot of people like the fridge bins but I actually like these better the great thing is is they're on sale right now at the container store plus they now bundle them in packs of 12 which would have been great when I cleared out their shelves for even better savings so Again, container store, white plastic storage bins with handles. I've got the link down below for shopping. Raise your hand when you were around when Cropper Hopper still existed. That was one of the original brands in modern scrapbooking. I certainly was in the early 2000s. I bought from Cropper Hopper several products, including their paper holders. They no longer exist, but they're still a company called Advantage Corporation that makes these 12 by 12 paper holders. And what's great is you don't have to have your stacks of paper this way and then you have to move them out of the way just to find something. Vertical paper storage. I have a whole bunch of the Michaels cubes that I organized my paper in. And you can see like cardstock in rainbow order or uh, like this one, for instance, are some categories. And this um, paper holder, the Advances Corporation, they're on Amazon, so I've got links down below. They also make the, the little dividers and these paper, I believe they're called paper envelopes. Now this is a different style because this is the original cropper hopper style, but they have some where you can have little projects put in and theirs I believe are sealed so you just slip it in whereas this one opens up. So I really, really recommend having your paper in vertical storage because it makes life so much easier when you're searching for something. You don't have to deal with the heavy. Paper weighs a lot. So again, the paper holders, Advantis Corporation. How many of you own a label maker? If you don't have one, go get one. It will change your life. I use this guy so much and he's very, very old. I think about 15 years. Kind of wish I could retire him and get someone that's a little prettier because he's definitely an old, old model. I've linked to the Amazon listing for a newer brother p touch that's the one that i really want to get <laughs> but for now i keep using this one you can label anything and everything when i showed you the paper holders i've labeled some of the paper holders i took off most of my labels because i reorganized so now i have to go back and redo labels you can label dividers i've used it in labeling all my die cuts and such are in these iris containers you know i label it by either manufacturer or by type uh, of product or by topic i've even labeled around my house and i have these little leftovers the switch plates where i have multiple lights these are extras so that i could tell which one is which or if someone visits my house they know which one is which and even for my business i made a quick makeshift little area for product storage and I use some cardboard uh, mailers from kits and I just put labels on them with this guy makes life a lot easier than having to jump on a computer and create something you just type it in this has a quite a bit of functions type it in print it out stick it on lots of different types like on my carousel where I have my roller stamps and watercolors. I did some labeling there. I did run out of that color, so I'm gonna redo that. Uh, anywhere, it's, it's great. You change the size, there are font options. This one only has two, the new one has more, and it will change your life. Hands down, the number one game changer in my scrapbooking was the Silhouette Cameo 
and I got my first one in 2012 and it's the version one. I subsequently got a portrait and then I felt so strongly for the past couple years using cut files that I opened up my own shop where I designed them and also cut them out for people because I felt that so many were missing out that don't have the machines or don't have the desire to deal with the machines and cutting. If you look at my scrapbooking in the last few years, a significant portion include cut files. They just elevate the design and add more whimsy to them. And I have tons of information and tips and tricks on cut files and the silhouette software and the silhouette cameo machines but that would be for another video if people are interested in that but i do want to share one quick tip and that would be to look into different mats besides the silhouette brand i feel that the silhouette brand mats are a bit flimsier than others and they are more expensive so i have a combination of those that came with my machines plus i've been using the cricut mats for a few years you have to cut them down and there are youtube videos showing you how to do that where you line up the sticky part and then cut off the excess from the cricut mats and i've also bought some off brands much more affordable so that would be my one silhouette tip that I share at the moment. And I have links to the ones I use below. I now have four machines. My two newest are the Cameo 4 and I did purchase them for my business. So I totally recommend the Silhouette Cameo. Or if you don't wanna do with the machines, you can buy them from me. <laughs> this little guy is the Epson PM400 printer and it is a portable printer in the sense that you can take it places but it's not as small as say an instax printer or a little zip printer i guess it's equivalent to about a selfie printer but it prints so much better the quality is amazing on this i wanted to show you it opens up so this is portable i've taken it to crops i've even shown people how i print off of it in crops and and then this pops up so this is your little screen i'm not going to do a demo it's just to tell you a little bit about the printer it has one little pack that has four different inks in it uh, so it's not like a thermal printer it actually takes ink i measured the first time i had this my first pack and i got 106 prints out of the one ink this is the printer that I feel has matched what I see on screen the best. Now, I've been printing at home since 2011 when I first started Project Life. So I am a big believer in home printing and I've had several printers that I, I've, I've really liked, Canon printers. But with the Canon printers, I've always found that they print a little darker. With this Epson Picture Mate, I feel like it captures that brilliance or glow in faces a lot better. So I have less tweaking to do in my software to get it to print like what I see on my screen. It is pricier than a selfie, but I'm telling you, the quality of the skin tones is amazing and the fact that you can print not only photos on here but you can print on cardstock on regular paper you just cut it down to the size you want i print all my vellum journaling because that's what i like to do a lot and then i cut it into strips i print through here and it's also convenient that you can go up to five by seven. So it's well worth the extra price instead of getting the selfie. This is the Caterpillar Pro paper trimmer and the Caterpillar Crop paper trimmers. And before I got this, I had gone through seven different trimmers. Some were guillotine, some were on a track, I had two different types of Fiskars. I had a EK Success one. I even had 
an X-Acto one that had a laser line on it. Hands down, this has been the absolute best paper trimmer. I've had it now for five years. It has a really sturdy track and it's self sharpening the blade against itself. So I'm gonna move this out of the way, but really quickly, the crop version has the same mechanism and the same self sharpening blade, same size and everything. Just the bed of it is smaller and then you pull out the ruler like this to get up to the longer paper. And I use this when I scrapbook out of my home. But what I really love is the bigger one because of the heft. Now, now this is pretty heavy because of this. This is even heavier, at least this is portable. The Pro is my love. They both have the lit track with LEDs, really bright. You can't see them too much in all this lighting, but I'm gonna turn off my photography light so you can see. Hopefully this will capture it, although I am not 100% sure. When you put a piece of paper here, you can see through the paper, so you can accurately cut. And it cuts like butter. It can also cut really, really skinny slivers. So I'm gonna do it with a dark piece of paper and then show you, I'm gonna turn the lights back on look how thin of a sliver that is nice and straight clean cuts it also does really thick cardstock for my business i use a hundred pound weight cardstock quite thick and this cuts through it like nobody's business just wonderful i also have a video showing how you can gut your paper in the middle with this most people assume that you can't but you can you just shift the blade out of the way and get your paper in where you want the line to be and then you can come down and gut your paper i really love the caterpillar pro so much it is worth the investment if you have the space uh, it's great because it doesn't move around and it also has a little storage compartment here which I never use but it's there so if you're looking for the paper trimmer to be all paper trimmers in my opinion this is it I know this looks like it belongs in the organizing section of my video, but I didn't want to treat each individual type of container as a different product. So I will link to all of these that I can find links to for buying, but I wanted to really address this more as an issue of how you organize all the little bits. The main thing, my main takeaway is take them out of their original packaging. So I started off with die cuts in the iris containers, the five by seven, four by six. I like the five by sevens for die cuts in particular because there's more room. I have a bunch of these on shelves so I can see it, I can easily grab it. Some things I have in drawers. So I have a wood veneer drawer and I have things like these four by six containers to divide up the different types, plus smaller containers that uh, will help me contain the little sets of the similar items. And then I started buying these Sistema ones, two different sizes, and I can link that in Amazon as well. And uh, what I like is I can do by by type. So for instance, for my Felicity Jane stash, I have all the rubber shapes or silicone shapes in one, and then I have all the acetate type shapes in another. And then these are in a drawer with 
more dividers and containers of all the different Felicity Jane products. So I have a Felicity Jane drawer, for instance, or a Simple Stories drawer, simply because those are manufacturers I have lots of. And then I can also, I try to color code, but it's not always the case because they only come in certain colors, for instance. But you know, you can also, as I mentioned, doing labels. And sometimes I cut from packaging the labels and put them on there. I, I like that as well. Take die cuts, for example. They're often in either individual or like these waterfall packages that are stapled on and they have the peely, sticky stuff. And then you have to take them out, go through, put it back in. Sometimes they get stuck. The tape gets back on there. You have to open it back up. And then they sometimes they'll even get stuck on the way in and that sort of thing. That's really annoying. So what I like to do, and this is what I'm recommending, is you get containers. You know, it could be you like different containers, but get containers that let you take things out of the packaging. Now, this, for instance, is Pebbles, and there are die cuts, and they are from a couple lines. I like to think of certain things under manufacturers, like Pebbles, because I have multiple collections from a particular manufacturer. And so what I will do is I will go ahead and empty all die cuts from all the collections I'll have from Pebbles, for instance and put them all in one and if if i like the manufacturer a lot i might have to think ahead uh and divide it into two and, and try to keep like two collections in one or three collections in one and three collections in another it all depends but right now this is what i have for the jen hadfield pebbles collections i believe these are just two or three. Oh, see, and then this one's split. So that's why I like the five by sevens. It lets me grow and, and it fits some of the bigger die cuts some manufacturers have. And see, this is really annoying when you're doing a process video and you have to open the crinkly plastic. So now you can see there's a room to move things around. I, I'm sort of a rifler. I like opening it up and feeling like this treasure and you even have a little lid where you can put the ones you're discarding or as you're going through, just trying to spread out and pick what you want. It, this is a lot easier than having to open a bunch of different packages. So this is what I'm recommending is containerize and to organize and make it easier to find things. I used to keep die cuts and stickers in binders and I've seen the resurgence in that with pockets, page protectors. Oh gosh, that drove me crazy. This is a lot better system. You can fit more, you can see more at a time in a, in a sense that you can have like items together and, and be able to see rather than have to flip through pages I pulled this set of thickers to show you another game changer. I really want to do another whole video on how I organized my thickers, my smaller word stickers, alphas, word strips, that sort of thing. But I, I felt I needed to mention these poly bags, and there's a link down below. Take your thickers and alpha stickers out of the original packaging these come in a very flimsy plastic again you have to deal with the tab that has the glue strip on it to take them in and out and it's so hard to fit them back in sometimes instead the poly bags they are a thicker plastic more durable they won't rip on the sides these are six inch by 12 inch they slide in and out so much easier look at that right and then all you have to do is cut the top off which is what i do and you don't have to do it this way you can label however you want but all i do is i cut the actual top off of the thickers and any any other brands i really do like to make sure i have the brand name on these especially for design team videos or process videos, you have to have the name to refer back to. And then um, in a case like this, what I will do is stick it. So these are clear. So I'll just stick it at the bottom of 
the back side. That's it. So much easier than having to open this flap each time. So like I said, there will be a video coming up about everything thickers and alphas and word stickers, but I wanted to include this in the idea of taking all your products out of the original packaging. It really saves time and effort when you have all your stuff sort of containerized out of the original packaging, grouped into like things or like manufacturers, a like type, really. That's been one of the biggest game changers in helping me find what I want when I need a scrap and also giving me inspiration uh, when I don't have it. I can look at what I have in my containers and it's a lot easier to get inspiration than having to pull lots of different little packages from everywhere. If you've been following me for any length of time and have seen at least one of my videos, you will know that I use undo on everything. There isn't a time I sit down to scrap where I don't get something stuck to something else accidentally and I have to use this. You've got the standard four ounce bottle. It opens up, this is a really old bottle because I got a refill bottle. And you have the liquid come out It'll guide it to what you need to guide it on. Uh, it has a scraper that helps scrape stuff off. This does not damage any photos. It does not damage vellum. It doesn't make it curl. It doesn't damage anything that I've come across so far. And it'll remove everything except liquid adhesives that dry. It won't work on that. My best advice is to get a small bottle or I think I've linked to a set of two bottles which I'm gonna go ahead and get because this one's getting so messed up I've had this probably for six years when you are running low buy the refill because it's so much more economical 32 fluid ounces I've used maybe a third of this bottle and I bought this I looked it up February 2018 and like I said every single layout and project I ever sit down to do, I am busting out the undo because I make boo-boos all the time. It's a lifesaver. I'm always getting goop on my photos. I will pour some of this on a photo and take a baby wipe and gently wipe and get all the residue off so I don't have those smudges on photos that are left over even when you've removed some adhesive but you still have smudges. This will take care of the smudges as well. It also takes care of labels. You know how annoying it is to get labels on something? Like you'll get a piece of cardstock with a label in the back or you get a jar of something and you want to remove a label. This will take it off. I noticed that they said it doesn't ship to California, but I put this in and checked out and had no issues. I'm in California. I couldn't do what I do without my undo. Phew, we made it to the end. Thank you so much, everyone who's still with me. <laughs> I hope you have found a lot of inspiration in this video. Some uh, things that you want to try in your crafty space and in your scrapbooking. You know the drill. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you aren't already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to let you know when my next video comes on. Also, if you have scrappy peeps that you think might benefit from some of this please feel free to share i want to know from everyone down in the comments below for my next organizing type of video do you want to see how i organized all my thickers alpha stickers tile stickers word strips all of those i've got them all in one of my rascogs organized or would you prefer to look at my other RASCOG that has my most used tools? I wheel it out over next to me at my scrap desk and then I have everything that I absolutely find essential right at my fingertips. Or the third option would be, do you want to find out some silhouette and cut file tips and tricks that I have learned after many months of designing and cutting lots and lots of files for people. So let me know which of the three down below in the comments. 
And last, don't forget, I've got all the links to all the products that I've talked about here today down in the description and that coupon code for the Lots of Style Waste Basket. Thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you here next time.